Hi guys, this is Mac here and I welcome you all to my YouTube channel, which is called Mac Vlogs. So my guest for today is really important to know who he is. His name is Mr. Adnan Shokat and he is running his broadcasting company, which is called Classic Broadcasting. And he is the founder and the CEO and the business head which of his organization, where of a one TV, organize, Oxygen TV and Associated Press. So before I introduce him, I would like to talk about Adnan Shokat Saab, who he is and what he's currently doing in Pakistan. Well, I am really astonished and amazed to know that anyone who needs broadcasting licenses in Pakistan, he is the right person to be contacted. Because in Pakistan, if you want to have your own TV channels or the network, so you have to go through him basically because he has all the expertise and all the knowledge in Pakistan, how the system works. So it's going to be amazing to talk to him today in the evening and understand how our TV channels in Pakistan are functioning and working with all the expertise and the knowledge which he possesses. So let us welcome and learn from him and try to understand how we all can become stars by going on the TV channels. So good evening, sir. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Um, welcome, Salam. I'm good. I'm good. How are you, Mansu? I'm fine. Alhamdulillah. So it's really my honor and a privilege to have you on my channel today as my guest speaker because I want my followers and my audience to know in Pakistan how the content is being created and you with your support and your company and your broadcasting company which you uh, promote the different contents, right? So how that happens, please, before you proceed with all that, we would like you to give a little bit of introduction who is Adnan Shokat and then we'll take this uh, interview session bit forward with the smiles on our faces and enjoy this session. Thank you once again. Please give a, your brief introduction. Okay, uh, you know that my name is Adnan Shokat and I am associated with the broadcast industry of Pakistan for the past uh, 15 years. Uh, before that, I was with the with, with different TV channels and different media companies uh, related to content, content syndication, advertising, media buying, media selling and uh, you know uh, everything related to media so uh, so my whole experience uh, of, of, of 20 22 years it, it it's all uh, media related and it's all horizontally and vertically integrated uh, whatever i've done so far uh, currently i uh, i am running a tv channel called Afghan tv uh, number two i am uh, i was running a tv channel called oxygen tv and i'm in the process of selling that uh, entity at the moment Number three, I am a local business partner with Associated Press in Pakistan. Uh, AP, AP, as you know, is the largest uh, news agency in the world. It's an American uh, news agency. And uh, uh, AP, I'm their local business partner. I provide broadcasting services to them. So when you see somebody saying reporting live from Islamabad, he's doing it from my rooftop. Uh, and I provide all the satellite connectivity and the DSNG facilities to them. Uh, yeah, this is what I do. Uh, apart from that, uh, as I said, I have some other ventures, but they're all related to media as well. Uh, I am supporting uh, one, of, uh, one of these uh, new emerging OTT platforms. OTT is basically uh, like YouTube is, is an OTT platform. Uh, so there's a new platform uh, coming up from Pakistan uh, called Rinstra. Uh, I'm providing uh, content consultation and I'm providing content to them uh, to be shown on to that. Uh, OTT platform. Uh, other than that, I am working with a lot of international media uh, entities. Uh, like I'm a, a senior partner with the Deutsche Welle, the DW, the German TV channel, and I provide them certain services, a set of services in Pakistan, and I uh, uh, run their content on my TV channel, and I provide them with some other content. Uh, apart from all this, <laughs> I uh, uh, so give services to a satellite company in Pakistan. Uh, mm -hmm. ABS satellites. Uh, it's a satellite company based out of Hong Kong, and uh, their satellite is right above Pakistan, and they are based out of Hong Kong, so they can't see what's going on uh, to the satellite. So I'm their eyes and ears in Pakistan from Pakistan, and I collect the data and I send data uh, to them on daily basis. So their NOC is uh, based at my place. I provide them with the hosting facilities, as you can say. So yeah, this is what I do. This is uh, uh, what I've been doing so far. Uh, yes, I hope this this 
that is why it's your question you know i would like to ask you this question is really 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 important basically because i come to know and i have been aware that do we all have the freedom of speech to express ourselves with our content in pakistan in the in the broadcasting industry or on the tv channel which we all hear from everyone that nobody is allowing the media people to express themselves or come forward and talk and say anything because it's sponged or whatever it happens because of the camera and stuff i'm sorry i shouldn't be saying about the camera but again the fact is do we really have that freedom to express ourselves in pakistan international uh, bringing any content interna from international to pakistan and talk about something is it are we really free yet okay there are two three different sections of this question one is that are we allowed to say whatever we want yes we are yes we are uh, there is no uh, there's no you know uh, uh, there's no person standing behind my back with a stick on my head that if you say this i'll you know just bang your head no there's nothing like that uh, media in media we have to be you know internationally not only in pakistan every wherever you go in the world you have to be responsible in reporting what you are seeing uh, unfortunately media is still in its infancy in pakistan we just started 15 years ago and we are still in a process of you know getting around uh, the main concept of media broadcasting um uh, and as you can see the technology is also changing so it is it is also playing a very important part in its uh, you know journey uh so as as i have been giving lectures as well on this uh, on different platforms that the media needs a lot of training mm -hmm. all the media personnel it's not only the reporters or the anchors or it's it's the cameraman it's the technical staff the non technical staff you know whosoever is related to uh, something which is going on the air uh, including the van drivers which we have you know uh, they all need a certain type of training and they have to show a certain level of responsibility you know mm -hmm. uh, when you start talking uh, you know um, against your state and your government and your country that's <laughs> that's uh, you know that's bad in every country it's not only in parks and that's bad in, it's actually bad in uh, you know in every aspect so you have to be very responsible you can choose different words you can choose decent words in describing a situation you know uh, media has to be, remain a non biased uh, you know uh, when it comes to the information or the news uh, but when you become biased most of our tv channels as you can see they have already made their alliances with political parties so mm -hmm. you see biased opinion you don't see a clear picture you know uh, right now as as we can see that in pakistan that you know most of the political parties they have made alliances with different tv channels or the media outlets and they only speak whatever they want them to speak you know or or portray a certain picture which they want to show you know whether negative or positive that's a, a different debate so they are showing their side of the story they are not showing the actual picture So, so why yeah, yeah why is that so actually basically because when you see abroad the, our overseas pakistanis living in middle east and europe and us they always get that sense of negativity in, from our media you know when i was abroad and i used to see all our tv channels and stuff and i used to get that feeling that pakistan is not a safe place to be you know after all after living in pakistan for the, almost 2 years now i feel the ground realities are totally different from what we see up outside from the media channels the way they portray themselves because it's totally negative i will be very honest with you that whenever you open a tv channel and they all are talking about negative aspects and and the politicians are so filled up with ven venom you know that as if they're going to uh, get rid of someone or something like that but unfortunately mm -hmm. we all are the ambassadors of pakistan and on the tv channels where we are promoting and uh, showing the positive we need to show the positive angle about our pakistan okay but that's not this thing because if you see the talk shows internationally the way they conduct and the way our people are conducting the talk shows it seems that there is a lot of chaos and there of mess on our tv channels what would you like to say on that and how can we change the perspective and the mindset of our tv channels 
Okay. Again, there are multiple sections in your question. Uh, mm. One, as I said, that the media outlets they need to be trained. They need a certain level of training and okay. understanding of the content. You know, mm. it's, it's it's a lot easier. Or it was really funny when you know uh, when the first TV channels started, like Jio TV and all, long mm. time ago. And you saw Hamid Mirs of this world, you know, with the uh, with a person from People's Party or a person from Muslim League, and then person from a PTI, and you mm -hmm. just let them lose, you know, and they start shouting, yelling, and fighting, and because they all have a different opinion of, about uh, a certain thing. Because they are that's why they are representing different parties, you know. You can't put them together. So you, you if you put them together, you can never have a decent talk, mm -hmm. you know. That's why you see a lot of three people are start talking, and what would you understand? You will not understand a single word what they're saying, whether right or wrong. That's a separate debate altogether. So this is the wrong format, uh, you know. I so it's just like you are sitting just with me, and you are throwing in questions, and I'm giving you answers. You know, sure. whether right or wrong, that's a separate debate altogether. But I am trying to, you know, satisfy your uh, by by giving the answers. So if you if you put up somebody who wants to portray bad, you know, and if you put me over there uh, as a patriotic person who cannot listen anything against uh, the motherland, uh, mm. I will probably get up and slap him. You know, uh, this is this is this is the this is the extent. That's why you see if you if you check on YouTube, there will be a lot of uh, content available in the uh, parliaments of the other world. And the mm. TV talk shows where the guests have they started quarrelling and fighting, you know. So yeah. because there is a difference of opinion, and you have to respect the opinion of others. I'm not saying that Muslim League is right or Buddhist Party is right or PTI is right. You know, they all have their shortcomings. They all had their chances. They all messed up. But you can't put them all together, and you know, it's like a chicken fight. You know, and you won't be able to understand. So this yeah. is the wrong format. Everyone has their own and the right of their own opinion and the views, right? Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. I'm not disagreeing with that. You know, mm -hmm. nobody can disagree with that. And mm -hmm. that's the beauty of it. That's why, uh, as I said, you need training. Number two, we try and copy a lot of programs from abroad, mm -hmm. especially in India. You mm -hmm. know, uh, Arnab Goswami, he's, he said, I'm sorry to use this, but he's an idiot. You know, uh, why? Becoming loud, shout, and yell uh, at your guest. I don't know what kind of a format it is. You know, probably a, a, a person like me who's very egoistic, who who really takes pride in in, in my own achievements. Uh, I will probably not sit in his program at all, at any cost. You know, you know someone, but someone, someone told me in Pakistan that if you want your content to be promoted, you need to be very controversial. Is that true? Not exactly. You see, okay. again, again, there are myths and there are practices. You know, if you see uh, a lot of content which used to be very, very popular, uh -huh. you know, the, the political talk shows they were really, really popular at one point of time. Mm -hmm. But now, if you ask me, when was the last time I've seen a political talk show? I, I can't recall when I saw the last one. Mm -hmm. I would rather stick to YouTube and Netflix of this world, and uh, you know. Uh, enjoy myself with a, with a decent content rather than watching stupid talk shows, uh, you know, in which, okay, there, there's another difference here. There, you, there's, a, there's, a, there's a difference here as well. I belong to media industry and I am working with one of the largest news agencies in this world. So the flow of information is, you know, I am in the middle, middle, middle of that. So mm -hmm. willingly or unwillingly, there's a flow of information. So I know a lot of things as a fact. You know, probably you will not be able to grasp that, or probably a common man who is watching TV, you know, uh, will not be able to understand that. But I clearly underst understand few things, and I clearly know a few things, uh, because as I said, the flow of information is as such that you know I am willingly or unwillingly grasping that. So when when you uh, when I watch something on TV and I see and I. And I become really sad at times that well, what is he talking about? He doesn't know the facts at all. Mm -hmm. you know? And he doesn't know the ground reality at all. You know, because a lot uh, of people as, do, as in our. Uh, you know. Because I guess a lot of people don't do their homework when they're coming on a talk show. You know, they're just simply uh, being. No, not at all. 
not not at all not at all not at all a, a lot of that's why i disagree with pti as well at most of the times when when they come their representative or the spokes person they when they come on tv uh, they are not aware of their facts and figures you know mm -hmm. nor they try and get the facts and figures before running a show cuz i am sure that they they are informed about the topic uh, which 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 will be discussed you know uh, so they should know the facts they don't know the facts i see they don't know the history they don't know the history you see that's that's the that's the sad bit that's why i said the media it needs training and a lot of people who are coming appearing on media they need training as well mm -hmm. you know okay so instead of becoming a fool in front of, uh, of the million audience uh, you know there's no point you should is if you have facts if you have numbers if you have the stats right you can defend yourself and defend the point of view of your party you know i'm sure uh, none of these parties have uh, you know uh, as i said the illiterate are not running those parties the people who are running the party are very literate they are very exposed and they know uh, uh, their their thing you know so everything is in a, in a different order so if you are defending your party you know which is being uh, governed and run by a lot of educated people uh, decent people you know from different uh, sects of life like the lawyers and the judges and the bureaucrats of this world so they they know what they are doing but you as a person as an individual doesn't know that and you do not know how to represent your uh, you know uh, party so the others will take advantage of it they will start yelling at you at you they will shout at you and you will be left helpless but to defend yourself in the in the same manner you see because you won't be because they want to you want to give yourself the facts because they want to suppress the other person by just saying that we know everything and you don't know anything oh, that's the it's it's a common thing when you when you find out that the person sitting next to you doesn't know anything mm. you know so it's mm -hmm. really easy to suppress them you know to put them under pressure to put them you know uh, or catch them off guard uh, many times in, in a conversation so it's, it's a lot easier uh, you know you see that's why you respect the uh, uh, elder uh, politicians because they know they know the history you know can you this define, young lord yeah can you define the difference between the tv network and the tv station for my followers because a lot of people get confused at times if i'm not wrong that any channel which is coming on the tv it's a tv network or it's a tv station they are running like ay geo okay. news sama all these are channels do they uh, these are the networks right not the tv stations okay there's a the, the clear difference is that uh, an entity is called tv station when it's running a particular channel okay you know, like sama tv it's mm -hmm. a channel they're based out of karachi they have bureaus all across pakistan they have a setup in islamabad they have a setup in lahore so it's mm -hmm. a, it's a tv channel uh, when you say network network means that it has another set of tv channel like this into uh -huh. their umbrella like uh -huh. airway so when you have airway airway digital airway news mm -hmm. airway uh, tech you know mm -hmm. so it or like geo tv it's a network so it's a geo tv geo kahani geo entertainment geo sports you know uh, geo days so it becomes a network a group of channels under one umbrella becomes a network you know uh, like btv again uh, yeah please multiple ahead, channels under one umbrella okay multiple anybody, channels owned by the same group mm -hmm. if anybody wants to apply yeah, for please. a tv channel or open their own tv channel for the licenses what are what process they have to go through and what are the documents they would require internationally or locally to set up a tv channel or tv station or a tv network in pakistan is it difficult or it's accessible to start their own channels okay uh, you see the thing is that whenever you have uh, a business in pakistan there is a regulator behind that business Particular, okay. particular business like if you're into oil and gas there's ogra uh, which regulates the oil and gas you have state bank when it comes to banking and finance you mm -hmm. have uh, uh, you know pamra as as the regulatory body for uh, media and broadcasting in pakistan so okay. all the regulators they have a set of rules and regulations okay. you know and they they have a set of uh, uh, requirements uh, when you want to apply for a particular type of license 
so when we talk about a tv channel or a tv station in pakistan uh, the regulator offers two set of licenses one is the uh, uplink license in which everything is being operated from pakistan uh you know like the satellite uplink and uh, the distribution networks from pakistan uh, the other channel, set of license is called landing rights when mm-hmm. you are an international channel like hbo warner brothers wb or dw dutch la or sky bbc of this world or upon tv for that matter you are a tv channel working outside pakistan and you want to get into pakistani market for distribution purposes and business purposes so you get you apply for a landing right license uh both of these licenses have the same criteria uh there's a set of documentation which is required obviously your company needs to be registered with the sccp which means that you fall under to under another regulator mm-hmm. for for your companies so, and and of obviously you have to be a tax registered and nt and you need to have an nt number and a, a gst registered company as well and uh, you need to have a certain uh, record as well into the same field like if you're related to media industry you know do you know anything about sales marketing you know distribution uh, so the 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 directors are very important of uh, uh, of that company so the regulator wants to see their cvs and uh, uh, and you know they want to assess uh, the same way uh, apart from that they need a technical uh, feasibility as well that how do you want to uh, you know uh, set up this tv channel uh what kind of an equipment you will be using what kind of a technology you will be using uh and then uh, you need to provide proper financial uh documents that yes you can afford this project it's not that you will just get a license and then you will probably sell it in the market instead of running well, it uh, and there is the running cost of it so you have to explain all that in a detailed feasibility so these are the basic point. set of documents but yeah one of my yeah. followers mr sayed osama afaq he just uh, put, uh sorry he has put across a question by asking what is the cost of opening a tv channel so i guess it's really amazing to know what random or roughly estimation we can have for opening a tv channel you know yeah exactly okay it, it depends on the genre of the tv channel like if you are starting up with a news channel you know uh, you need to have a lot of uh, 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 you know equipment you need you need required a lot of equipment you need to set up uh, a big bureaus everywhere when you when you talk about the news channel when it comes to the entertainment channel the mm-hmm. setup is fairly simple but the mm-hmm. content cost goes up because the dramas and the shows are really expensive you know when mm-hmm. it comes to production and the vice versa when you come down to a music tv channel the cost is different when you come down to a movie channel the cost is completely completely different uh, mm-hmm. as as we were talking about earlier the sports channel it's one of uh, the most expensive ventures uh, when it comes to media broadcasting so the cost varies uh, when you talk about news channel uh, probably i know technology i am very much into technology probably my, the, if i set up something for myself the cost would be different but the, normally people end up spending about you know 20 25 crore rupees uh, on a tv channel these days Uh, when it comes to new new news tv channel i see uh, same goes for uh, you know entertainment the cost is less but you know and uh, by the way this doesn't include the licensing cost so I the see. license yeah the license uh, previously were given on a first come first serve basis uh, but now the 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 courts have ordered to uh, ask for biddings you know so 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 it goes through a bidding process uh so uh, so the last bidding was held last year uh no two years ago and uh, new channels were uh, you know offered for uh, 24 crore rupees i believe per ch- uh, per license so so it becomes a very very expensive affairs when it comes to that and of course the running cost uh, is, is is completely different uh, you know there is another question so for you yeah. there's another question for you which is on your screen if you can see how's the response of agwan tv in pakistan since you are the ceo and the business head of agwan tv so i think you are the ideal person to respond to this question for sure please go ahead yeah uh, okay agwan tv uh, as i was explaining to you earlier uh, is is a tv channel based out of afghanistan and mm-hmm. i have the landing rights uh, here uh, in pakistan uh, landing right means the distribution rights of this particular channel onto the cable networks 
uh, and and when i acquired that license it, everything was okay but uh, then i realized uh, and the market responded pretty badly because they were showing a lot of indian content which is dubbed into pashto language and dari language dari language is another dialect of persian language uh and uh, the political shows were uh, very much uh anti pakistan i must say and they i mean their theme and their tone wasn't right uh, for this market and so uh, i ended up setting up a separate beam altogether with my own content which i'm producing here in pakistan and uh, it's mostly in pashto language and english of course uh, and uh, i'm I, my channel is basically distributed into the pashto speaking uh, population of pakistan yeah yes i want to add before you continue is the indian influence a lot in afghan tv and uh, in afghanistan as you're saying is it true or is just a yes, of course, of course. Uh, it's a pretty heavy influenced people uh, by the indians uh, the afghans uh, yes, everything is is run and operated by afghanistan uh, in afghanistan by india uh, and again uh, we need to see the history you know mm. it's not it's not that it happened in 5 years or 10 years in 20 years no it's been happening for a very long time uh, I, i i was very very young back then uh, like 2 3 years old from peshawar city there used to be a service of uh, the gts the government transport service a bus used to leave peshawar uh, in the afternoon of uh, friday it used to go to kabul and people used to and, and there was uh, there was no visa back then so people used to get a pass they used to buy a pass with the bus ticket uh, for afghanistan it's called red pass and they used to go to afghanistan to watch indian movies into the their cinemas so used to watch a movie have good dinner over there spend the night and come back in the next morning from uh, kabul which is just 220 kilometers away from peshawar city so there was so the people are really really influenced uh, uh, by indians in afghanistan so uh, that's why there is a certain dislikeness for pakistan uh, as a country and they blame pakistan for so many other things like you know other neighbors so so yes the content is heavily heavily influenced uh, the one content a lot of questions are keep on popping up on my screen which they want to know and educate themselves from you mr adnan chakar that is why most tv professionals in pakistan aren't paid on time is it correct or do you want to say something on that for sure no it, it's correct it's 100% correct uh, as i said uh, and when we were talking earlier that you know economics plays a very very important role as mm-hmm. i was explaining the pricing of the tv channel in terms of the license fee and the running cost you know it goes into crores and crores of rupees you know and mm-hmm. every month there's a certain cost when the market is not supportive you know as 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 you know i, I told you earlier that you know our market depend uh, we acts in a very different way different mm-hmm. manner it's not mature it's not mature at all so mm-hmm. there is a heavy cost which is being borne by the tv channel and there's no return on the market so right. there is always a, a, a gap between between the payments mm-hmm. you know uh, first channel is not receiving payments from the market because the market is not operating properly even if you do business you get uh, you have to give a 90 to 100 day credit time you know the pba the pakistan broadcasters association is trying to cover that but n- nothing so far nothing so far so it's difficult so when channel is not making money it's not spending money you know that's why the salaries get delayed and uh, you know uh, okay there's another thing that more as i said uh, earlier if you recall uh, i said a lot of tv channels with their management and with their staff they need a lot of training in different areas so they don't know when to stop because it's a it's it's a, it's a endless pit hole in which you are putting in money you know and uh, there's no light at the end of the tunnel trust me so when you're putting in money you need to know that how much money you can get back uh, from the market if you don't know that equation uh, you will end up spending a lot of money that's why you will always be out of cash and you will not be paying your salaries and you know uh, other vendors are on time is pemra deciding the trending and the trp of all the channels by letting the people know that which channel is on the top in terms of their content so does pemra decide there or is there an, uh, any other institution which decides which channel is going upwards in the trending wise what do you have to say on that okay uh, pemra doesn't decide that 
Pamra uh, is not in a position to decide that. There are different companies, uh, rating companies, uh, which means that they have a, a mechanism in place uh, to give the audience ratings, uh, like a company called uh, Media Logic. They all they they heavily depend on a thing uh, on a technology called People's Meter. So People's Meter are installed in different places. Channels doesn't know. Uh, they do not know where they are installed. And they gauge the audience reaction and uh, responses to a particular TV channel. So, uh, so yes, the TRPs or the uh, GRPs, gross rating points, they're all uh, decided by a third party uh, on basis of the data which they collect. I think one of your colleagues and one of my favorite uncles, I would say, or <laughs> who we know very well from uh, a common mutual uh, colleague. Uh, Personality, Mr. Parvez Azhar, he would like to ask you a question. How TV channels depend on ads from the government? I'm sure you have an answer for that, actually. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, we have seen it in the past. As I said, that our media industry is not developed. It's still in its infancy. It is developing on a daily basis or evolving on a daily basis. Uh, that's why a lot of political parties, they when they come into power, they try to buy the media. So they spend a lot of money in terms of their own advertisements to 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 on onto the TV channels. So like we have seen it in the past, like People's Party government and the Muslim League government, especially the Muslim League government, they have spent a lot of money onto their own personal projection, which means that um, uh, I, being a TV channel owner, will get ads of Muslim League, you know, uh, something to do with the agriculture sector, and there's a quote of Shabazz Sharif and Nawaz Sharif. You know, I don't mind because I'm being paid for that, and I'm being being paid premium price for that. You know, so so they were using the, those funds and that money, the government uh, money, the exchequer's money, onto their own projection and to satisfy the media houses so they could keep quiet about their misconduct or misdoings or you know shortcomings. And and I agree that it's not totally eth ethical of doing that, right? Like it's, it's not ethical. I must uh, must say that it's not... your voice is breaking. Uh, I yeah. can't hear you. Can you repeat? Yeah. yeah, I can hear you. All I was saying that it it's not ethical to use the government's money for their own projection, right? You can use your own platforms and content to be promoted in your angle. But when you're in a government level or you're in you're given a uh, seat, like you're you're in the government, right? So you should not be using and misusing the funds and the government's money on your own projection, right? Yeah, exactly. This is this is what the allegations are on on these people that you know they were using it for their own benefits and their own projection. And mm -hmm. so you see, it's 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 twenty two. You know they, they they were spending a lot of money uh, on 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 things which were not important, and they were mm -hmm. spending a lot of money which were giving them as a personality projection or as a party projection. Rather than you know being informative, and you know government's job is to provide information. So if you see uh, uh, an ad uh, or a, they're not called ads, then they're called public service message. Even when the government uh, wants to air something, it's they're called public service message. And uh, PSMs are uh, by given by government uh, most of the times. Like this particular government is doing a thing which, and they don't have money, so they're not spending money. So they are sending no. PSMs. To us, you know, related to COVID situation, related to COVID information, or related to flood situation, or the rain situation, or the dengue situation, you know, uh, in different areas. So they are called the PSM. This is the practice everywhere in the world, except mm -hmm. for Pakistan. In Pakistan, they were spending money to to get the message across, which was their own projection, basically. Yeah. The last question so before we wrap up. Sorry. So if you talk about ethics, there there were there were no ethics involved in it. You know, it's 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 exchequer's money. It's their own money. They are throwing it away like this. Before we wrap up our session, our live interview, there's one last question I would like to add on so that you can answer that and we can all get the answer for this. What is the main source of income for channels other than the ads? If you don't get the ads, how does the channel make money? Because they are running daily and minute by minute they're giving passing on the information and stuff. But if they don't have the ads. How the income is being generated without the ads? Okay, uh, as you as you said, the main source of revenue for a TV channel in Pakistan is the ads. Uh, okay. 
and it's the sole source of revenue in pakistan for the tv channel but when you are abroad uh, when you are not in pakistan uh, the cable operators they pay the tv channel to get access to their tv channel to be aired on to their uh, cable network uh, or the ott network or the iptv network or the mmds network they are all mediums basically to reach out the audience so they pay, pay like if you put a content on youtube youtube after certain time starts paying you you know okay this is how simple the model is so mm -hmm. when a cable operator wants to show let's say a one tv uh, abroad they will contact me and they will ask me a revenue deal and okay we will pay you this much uh, you know uh, as one time or we will pay you uh, we will come on to revenue sharing basis that we will gauge that how many audiences uh, you or how many households are looking at your tv channel and we'll give you an x amount of revenue or we'll share an x amount of revenue from our revenue so there are different models abroad but they are not applicable in pakistan because as i said again and again that the media industry is still in its infancy we are still on a, on to the old technology we haven't moved uh, uh, ahead uh, because of the you know different policies and different uh, uh, vested interest of uh, other groups uh, you know so uh, if once the the once we adopt the international uh, uh, procedures and practices there will be a different revenue stream uh, for tv channels but right now as you said that is only one revenue stream for a tv channel indecently that is the advertisements indecently yes get the money from the political parties under the table or get a deal from the government you know show their faces every day and get paid for that as i have been hearing about that we are focusing too much on tourism in pakistan basically because 2020 year was meant for tourism but because of covid 19 a lot of plans has been blocked or been uh, you know it's been on hold for some time in promoting tourism so do you feel and suggest in our pakistan that there should be a tv for tourism related activities happening in pakistan so the pakistan's positive impact can go internationally as you said that you would like to bring international content to Pakistan as well. So if international bloggers and bloggers who are coming to promote tourism, basically because we are choosing them as international uh, content creators to come to Pakistan and create an awareness program on tourism, where do you see Pakistan tourism? And if there can be a TV channel which can talk only about tourism in all over Pakistan. What do you have to say? Very short. But in a brief answer for that, if you can. That, that, that was a very lengthy question, so there is no short answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, yes, we could have a 24-7 uh, TV channel based out of uh, tourism. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of countries have that. Uh, the National Geographic has one. The you know few other Discovery has one. You know, uh, purely dependent on the travel uh, and tourism industry. Uh, in Pakistan, this particular government is emphasizing a lot on the tourism and uh, travel uh, industry. Uh, that's why they're trying to promote a lot of areas which are not being uh, explored previously by the tour tourists coming into Pakistan. Uh, we had issues in the past. Now we don't have any issues, uh, you know, of the security and the safety of the tourists tourist in, in those areas. So the northern areas are beautiful, you know. The deserts are beautiful. The 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 jungles are beautiful. the mountains. The, uh, the northern area. You go to northern area, you will be surprised to see the 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 places. I mean, we just saw a report the other day that there was a tunnel uh, in Nathia Gali, uh, which was just discovered by accident that it was blocked by the garbage and the rubbish, uh, which which is going towards Murray, you know, and it's shortening the distance. It was built by the uh, British Empire. <laughs> long ago and nobody paid any attention to that this particular government did uh, something uh, since the credibility is good so far so a lot of uh, foreign donors are coming into pakistan and one of the donors uh, paid the money to get that tunnel cleaned and uh, you know uh, uh, you know rehabilitate the whole place and uh, it, it's 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 a beautiful uh, thing now uh, you know and they have just opened it for the tourist, uh, local and foreign, whatever. A tourist is a tourist. Uh, so, so, so. But that that was something very nice, cute, decent, you know, and just hidden. 
you know so 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 if you if you go to kumrat valley right now you will be surprised you will forget switzerland you know uh -huh. i have been to switzerland i have taken out pictures and i have come to swat and i have taken out pictures there when you compare you know uh, they look identical almost you know uh, but yes we we need to strengthen the infrastructure when it comes to such beautiful places we need to have good hotels you know uh um, most of the people want to stay in decent hotels with decent facilities so government is promoting all that and they are you know putting up good hotels in different areas uh and and, and you will be surprised to know that the activities by the foreign tourist uh, which are being done in pakistan they are uh, you know tremendous uh, you go to uh, k2 area and you see the people who are coming uh, down for summit and the kind of facilities they have over there you will be surprised uh, but the world needs to know that uh, and we uh, we are i'm, sure, we, I'm sure you and i i'm sure you and i will do a separate segment on tourism complete tourism which we all Pakistanis need to promote our Pakistan in a positive manner, and we will be doing that, inshallah, so that inshallah. everyone internationally will know Pakistan is a beautiful place and a very peaceful country, and and they're very hospitality, which we always uh, give our international guests whenever they come down to Pakistan. So let's work on that, inshallah. If you, if you feel there is any tourism TV coming up, please let me know. I am up for it to be part of that. team to promote pakistan in a positive way and you have all my services as well thank you sure. mr shah anand pakistan for, for being a great guest on my show today i have been so uh, happy that i have been learning from you today since our interview started that whatever the broadcasting and all the media related activities are happening in pakistan and the knowledge which you have shared with us is tremendous tremendous Thank you once again. But I won't let you go before you can talk about my channel a little bit, basically because I know that you have been watching my channel, and it's going to be a great gesture and a great uh, honor of mine if you can just say a big shout out for MacLog so that everyone can support and give their thumbs up and subscribe and share my channel. Please, a small shout out from your side. Uh, uh, it's, it's a it's a it's a request and uh, and uh, you know for, for for the people who are watching maclogs uh, it's it's a great effort by somebody who wants to promote uh, pakistan and pakistani products and pakistani industries uh, i i my support is there and uh, i would i would like to request others to watch his channel and subscribe and like as well at the same time so uh, you know he could achieve something which he wants to for a very long time thank you Thank you and good evening, Mr. Anan Shakat Sahab, for being a great guest. Keep that smile on and keep on spreading the knowledge which we all, at times, lack related to the media. And I'm, I guess everyone would like to connect with you. And I have mentioned all, Mr. Uh, all the details about Anan Shakat Sahab in the description, everyone. So please go and follow and connect with him. And if you have any questions which I might have missed out today in the interview, so please go and check his Facebook and LinkedIn and connect with him. we will definitely answer all your questions if you have any doubts about pakistan media and the broadcasting rights the tv channels we will answer all of them so thank you once again so i would request before i leave that everyone should subscribe share and like and press the bell icon on mac vlogs on my youtube channel and keep keep on giving me lots and lots and lots of support i really need that so that i can keep on bringing wonderful people on my channel and promote and connect them internationally and locally thank you once again good evening assalam alaikum please take care of yourself in your family and with all the duas keep the smile on thank you once again assalam alaikum oh, thank you very much bye bye